I often swim in these dreams when there are no waterfalls near. Granny whispers to the almond-eyed doe on a forest morning washed in sparrows, dripping with jays. Sometimes, when the moon takes off her nightgown, we skate across huckleberry thickets like they were made of butter. The doe's mouth comes alive with a fistful of fresh red clover that was just teeming with honeybees. I only sing Go Tell Aunt Rhody the old gray goose is dead when I know there ain't no geese around. Why that fool was a-standin' on her head always did make me wonder. With a flash of her white tail, the doe disappears into the hemlocks. Cloaked in fog and squawking like there's no tomorrow, a murder of crows sliced through the yawning sky. The honeybee's legs are heavy with bright yellow pollen, and they almost seem to drop now and again on the way back home to the hive. Granny walks through the mind of her young self dreaming and stops to pick elderberries by the branch spilling over from spring rains. She feels the chill of the water on her feet and asks the young girl if she too is cold in that place where time hides from itself and moments stretch like gum between the fingers. The long Clinchfield coal train rolls up the steep grade beneath Bailey Mountain and blows before the trestle. Granny always says it's bad luck not to wave at trains, so she always waves, even to the man in the caboose no longer there. The caboose was the best part of the train, Granny almost sang to a scarlet paninger on the bough of the old pear tree in the meadow below Granddaddy's house. Watching the brakeman's lantern swaying to the rhythm of the tracks and slowly vanishing into the night was like warm milk before bedtime. Seeing where you have been is better than guessing about the future because the past really happened. It's a dandy measuring stick, even though the numbers are faded and fuzzy. Go tell Aunt Rhody. Go tell Aunt Rhody. Go tell Aunt Rhody. The old gray goose is dead.